Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Steph Williams. I'm a paper crafter and card maker from Queensland, Australia. Today I am so excited to share another Lawn Fawn Fans project with you. A few of us from our hop group all bought the Hive 5 kit from Lawn Fawn and we thought it would be fun to do another hop for you showing off that kit. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this adorable project. It is a doubled up platform pop-up card with a lot going on. I originally got the idea from this crafter, Eileen. I've just got a few screenshots of her Instagram and the original work of hers that I have taken a lot of inspiration from. I didn't see any tutorials that she did or any other photos that I could share with you, so make sure you go over to her Instagram to check it out. It is a ridiculously amazing project. Here I am, very excitedly, opening my kit and having a look at all the amazing things that are in there. I was originally planning on using a bit of everything from the kit, but this is just how it turned out in the end. To get started, I'm going to need four platform pop-up base pieces, and I'm going to be using the honeycomb stencil on all of them. I was really excited for this stencil. I absolutely adore bees. I love everything bee themed. Yellow usually isn't my color, but for some reason the yellow cards that I make always turn out good. It's just one of those things. It's just the way it goes. I found it super simple to get a really nice honeycomb background. So what I'm doing here is using some mustard seed ink and I'm going to be inking up my cardstock with this stencil. I actually found the white gaps between them to be a little bit too bright. So what you'll see me do is I go over it very lightly, just dabbing all over the white to dull it down a little bit. I was worried that it would blend a little bit too well and I just have yellow cardstock. But when I go over it with my brush in just a moment, it's actually just the excess on my my brush that I use with my orange inks. A lot of it is probably spiced marmalade if you need to ink up. But what I do is roughly go over it and the stencil catches just enough in the corners of all those hexagons and it gives it a really good look. For two out of four of these pieces that I'm making, I ink the back as well. So I've got two pieces that are white on the back and two pieces that have the full honeycomb design on both sides. This is because when I fold it up and cut those little windows out, I want the honeycomb pattern to be on the inside where my little bees are going to be seen. It was a little bit of work to essentially be doing six pieces, but it was so worth it. And honestly, this stencil is so much fun to play with. If you have it and haven't played with it yet, I highly recommend you get it out and have it go. It is so much fun. Once I'm done inking up my backgrounds, I'm going to get out my favorite watercolor pigments, my Starry Set, and I'm going to be using the red gold and the yellow gold. They are both completely different colors, and I find that the red gold really reminds me of honey. So I just water them down a little bit, I really mix it in so that they're nice and opaque, and then I sprinkle them all over the top. So here I've got my stitched square and stitched rectangle pieces from my pop, <laughs> I can never get this right tonight, my platform pop up. Die set. I've done that take like four times. I finally got it. Platform pop up die set. And I'm going to be cutting the little windows. I'm doing that on two of my pieces, the ones that have the ink on both the front and back, because we're going to be able to see inside them. I trimmed down these flaps with my lacy border dies. We'll talk about them a little bit later because they were a bit tricky to work with. Moving on to stamping, and I was so excited to start stamping out these little bees. They were so, so cute. I love the little party hats. They just make me so happy. I'm so excited for the honey jar and the little spoon. I just feel like they're going to make great additions for all of my kitchen themed cards that I tend to enjoy making with my little mice. And that tiny bunting is just adorable. This whole stamp set is just super cute. I won't bore you with too much of my colouring because a lot of it is the same. I really went for a very simple colour scheme today. Lots of it is yellow. I use orange for shading. And just like always, I keep my colouring very, very simple, just using two colours and blending them together. I also use some of my pastel Copic markers to colour in most of the other items. As always, I'm going to be using my white jelly roll pens for my highlights. I just add a few little lines and dots just to brighten things up a bit. 
For most of these images, I use my 0.8, but I also use the 0.5 for the little things like the bunting and my size one for the bigger items like the beehive. So set on doing the little scenes with the windows that I hadn't really thought of a topper for this card. So I went back through a couple of my old sets and I found that that fairy set has a flower that matches the bees and I also grabbed some presents. So here are those images. I didn't bother showing colouring them and all that just because you've seen my colouring enough by now. So here I am starting to assemble some little images. I have a little birthday cake and some little presents here that I'm going to be adding to one of the scenes on the inside. I'm adding some glue and a piece of cardstock here because this is going to be slipped in just like you would one of the tees for the platform pop-up set. Only this is going to be down the very bottom, not through the top. So here I am pulling one of those moves where I either make or break my card. <laughs> no ruler, nothing, just hacking away at my beautiful honeycomb piece with a knife, as you do. Just taking risks where I shouldn't have, but it did work in the end. And I'm going to be slipping this through so that it pops up and stands up down the bottom, just adding more dimension. The only problem with doing this is that it did stick out down the bottom and you could see it. So I tried to color it yellow and thought that would work, but I actually found a better way to cover this up a little bit later. Once I had done that, I then glued in some of these adorable little images in the background to just set more of the scene. I really enjoyed working with all the layers for this one. So we've got the images at the back, we've got the ones that have popped up in the middle, and then with the windows, I add some bunting and some little bees behind the windows too. There was just so many options with this. It was quite overwhelming and I'm glad I stamped out so many little bees. So this piece is going to be down the bottom and it's going to be attached to a plain piece at the back. I hope that makes sense. But here I am adding the double-sided tape so that I can adhere it to another half of a platform pop-up. Now here is my second story of this little beehive and I'm going to be doing the same thing. Just adding all of those cute little images. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is for a Lawn Fawn Fans YouTube hop. And we usually have our hops organized to do one per season and we have sponsors for them. For this, we don't because we kind of sprung it on ourselves and we're really excited to do this. So instead of a giveaway, we're giving away our card. I would have to confirm if everyone is giving away their cards. As I do mention a little bit later, I do have trouble with this card and it folding. So if for some reason I have any trouble with posting it, I will likely send the top half or make an entirely new card that will ship. So make sure you leave me a comment down below and I will send it to one of the commenters. Once again, I've poked a hole through the floor and this time I'm using one of the bigger tees, an actual one, not one that I've just chopped from some <laughs> random card stuff, because I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger scene. I'm going to have some little bees on this and some presents. So I needed the extra space. And there we have it, our second story is done. Here I'm simply folding one of those pieces that you're not going to see very much. It's just going to be the back of the platform pop-up, supporting the front scene. So this one's going to be at the back and down the very bottom. So this is what I was talking about with the flaps that I really had a lot of trouble just lining things up. Because I had used that stitch square and it had cut so much, it was really tricky to get these things adhered into place and I almost felt like maybe I shouldn't have adhered them at all and just kind of let the whole thing try to balance on its own. That is something I will consider the next time I make it because I had the same trouble when I made my Little Mermaid card. This card should be foldable but it kind of isn't because of where I had glued these pieces. The front really struggles to fold flat. So that's something I need to keep in mind the next time I try to make this because I'm sure I'm going to try and make another double story platform pop-up card at some point. It was just too much fun. Here I am doing the same with the other floor of this little beehive. This one worked a little bit better because I had a little bit more room left. I had cut the stitch square a little lower. So it had something to cling on to. But again, it doesn't quite fold as perfectly as it should. And here I am making all the little scenes and cute things for the top. 
I hadn't planned on doing this at first. I was just going to stick a little beehive and a bee on top, but I thought why not add a whole little flower garden and a sentiment on top too. So this came together really well. I've got some little balloons that I'm sticking around the beehive. You know when you go to a party as a child and they've got balloons out the front so you know where the party is. That was kind of the idea behind this. I think it turned out really cute. So I've cut another white tee for this and this is going to be in the center between the two platform pieces when they stick together. I've inked it up with some yellow ink just in case any of it is visible between the little beehive and the flowers. I love how this little scene turned out. I think it looks like a cute little cake topper and I feel like this could almost be a scene for a card front all on its own. For my sentiment today, I'm going with Happy Bee Day, but I'm going to be changing it up just a little bit so that I'm using the happy and day from this sentiment. And I'm going to be cutting the word B from some of my larger dies. So here I am chopping out my Happy Bee Day and I'm going to be trimming it down. I did this all fairly rough. I wasn't too fussed about how straight it was. I think it suited the card, how it turned out in the end. I'm chopping off the B and I'm just going to kind of like kick off, <laughs> scratch off the white embossing for that little hyphen. It worked okay. Here I am trimming off the excess for my little topper here and I'm going to glue it to a acetate circle. I got my Cricut to cut out a bunch of these a while ago. They're all just under three inches in diameter. So they fit really well on top of these platform pop-up cards. I do find my PVA glue is a little temperamental with the acetate. It doesn't always want to stick, which you'll see soon. But I'm finding my tape runner kind of works a little bit better. Here I am adding some white highlights to the word B, just so that it matches really well with the white embossed words on the black cardstock. And here I am sticking all these little pieces together. Now the reason I had to skip ahead and do the sentiment at the top was because it's going to be wedged between the pieces of my top platform. So here I am adhering all of that together. To cover up that little piece that I didn't want to have hanging out down the bottom, I saved my little stitch squares and I thought I'll just cover that up. I'm just going to glue it straight down, just make it a little bit more neat. Now because I had so many leftover bees, I thought it would be cute just to stick some around the sides and the edges. Now I feel like I kind of cheated here because I just kind of slotted the two pieces together. I haven't glued them because I was having problems with them folding. So these two platform pop-ups can be pulled apart, which will probably be good <laughs> for sending it to somebody. And they do kind of slide in nicely together. I feel like this is something that I might get better with with more practice, but for now it looks so cute. 
So here is the finished card and I would absolutely love to know what you think of it. Please don't forget to leave a comment and hop along to all the other stops on our sweet little hop to show off these bees. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.